Hello everyone. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day and if this is morning for you, I hope that you will have a wonderful day. Today, I just thought that I was going to do something for my daughter-in-law. And if you are watching this video and you are a long time subscriber of mine, well, you will remember little baby Ben, the adorable little boy that my son and his, his wife Marika had. And yeah, well this year she had a little baby girl and she named, they named their little one Lillian. I think it's just beautiful. Um, my, my grandmother's name was Lillian and they didn't even know that. I thought that was amazing. But anyways, um, my daughter-in-law is going to be going and having gallbladder surgery here in the next few days. And so I thought that I would make a couple freezer meals for her and her husband, my son, because yeah, I'm sure she's really not going to be up to cooking and I just wanted to try to make it a little bit easier on them. So I went online the other day and I looked all around and I decided that on, on three recipes that I was going to do, or, you know, I was thought would be nice to do. Let's put it that way. And oh, by the way, to tell you how much time has gone by, little baby Ben is not a baby anymore. Yeah, he's actually going into kindergarten this September. Yeah, he's turning five this month in August. So anyways, um, moving on. The first one that I'm going to make is called crock pot shredded chicken tacos. And this is one that you just put into a, a gallon size freezer bag and put in the freezer. And then when you are wanting to use it, you just take it out the night before. And then that morning you dump it in your crock pot and sure enough, you'll have dinner in about six to eight hours. So this one is extremely easy. This is really just dumping all the ingredients, which is four chicken breasts, a can of corn that's been drained, a can of black beans that's been drained, and a can of Rotel tomatoes, and a package of taco seasoning. And so, yeah, you just kind of put all that into, you mix the everything together and put it in a bag and you're good to go. And so they suggest that you put this over like um, soft taco shells or uh, tortilla chips or even a salad and to top it with shredded cheese or lettuce, tomatoes, sour cream, salsa, that kind of stuff. So yeah, so that's the first one that I'm going to do for her and that's gonna be rather easy. And the second one is called uh, Tuscan pasta. Yeah, this one, it says to put in two nine by nine pans. So I went to Dollar General and I picked up two nine by nine pans, plus my other recipe calls for a nine by 13. So I picked up them that also. But this one, when I saw the picture, then I looked at the ingredients, I thought, wow, this really sounds good. This, this is something that I would love to make for myself. Because this takes um, a 16 ounce box of bow tie pasta and some butter and some minced up garlic, some dried basil, um, an eight ounce cream cheese that's been softened and cut into cubes. And then sun-dried tomatoes. Those are, um, they're like whole tomatoes if you've ever, like I've only like learned about sun-dried tomatoes like two years ago. So I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're, they remind me of a tomato that is, they've done the same thing that they do with prunes. <laughs> You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> but um, so they're, they're very, very good in your foods. And then some milk, some Parmesan cheese, some pepper and salt, and then a cup of cooked chicken that has been cubed. And what you do with this is um, you just basically put it in, in, in your nine by 13 and, or, or your nine by nine pans. And yeah, so that's kind of, it's good. It kind of gets all mixed together, so that's nice too. And again, you freeze it and you take it out the night before and you thaw it out in your refrigerator and then the next day you can put it in your oven and cook it. And the third one that I'm going to make for her 
is called taco rice casserole. And this takes two pounds of ground beef that you, 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 you cook your ground beef along with a chopped onion. And it takes two cups of corn. It takes black beans. Now this takes uh, diced tomatoes with green chilies, which is just Rotel, right? And a package of taco seasoning and four cups of cooked rice and then three cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And this one you put in your nine by 13 and you put the rice down first and then you put all the other mixture on top and then your cheese goes on top of that. And again, you freeze it the night before and take it out and put it in the fridge and let it thaw out and then you, you bake it the next day. So those are the three that I have chosen for, for to do. I, I hope that they're good because I personally have never made them. But I just thought that they sounded really good and I thought that they would enjoy them also. Yeah, let me show you some of the stuff that I purchased to go with these wonderful meals. But this is everything that I got. Well, just about everything that I got. The chicken that you see here, I actually have another one of these in the refrigerator. And um, so I got some tortillas because I thought, well, maybe they're not going to want it with taco shells. And then I have the bow tie pasta and the corn and the black beans and the rotel and the taco seasoning and all those fun things. And the ground beef, well, that's from my freezer because that's from um, bulk meat that we had bought from our butcher. But that's about what I'm going to be doing. And then there are the pans. I went to Dollar General and bought those pans in order to not have to worry about her needing to return my pans. So I will put these three recipes in the description box below. That way, if you want to give it a try, that you can. And let me know what you think of it because, yeah, I'm not going to be able to try these. And at least not right now. So I will definitely have to try these in the future but yeah it's a beautiful day here and I'm going to take you outside because yeah we have another part of our project that is complete so as you can see they got the concrete all poured they did part of it, the lighter part, there towards the back, they did yesterday. And the reason why you can see kind of the ridges is because they cut the lines in it, but they haven't swept it off. And then this front part here, along with the walkway here, they did today. So that's pretty exciting, isn't it? It's looking good, and they'll come back then tomorrow, and they'll cut the, the lines in this part tomorrow. I wanted to talk today about the word rest because I think that there's a lot of misconceptions around this word. And some people picture spas and cucumbers and some define it as not working and perhaps binge watching on Netflix, playing games, or being on break from school. Maybe you think of counting sheep and going into a nice deep sleep. But no matter what comes to mind, Jesus really throws us a curveball with the image that he presents. See, we're told in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30 to come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke? Isn't that what's placed on an animal when it's time for work? Yes, but also when it's time to learn. In Jesus' day, to train young animals. They were yoked to older ones, more experienced ones. These older animals led the way and bore the weight of the yoke, while the younger ones followed along learning the role. Further, the word easy in Greek is also translated as well-fitting. 
because yokes were always carefully adjusted to rest precisely on an animal so as not to cause any harm or chafing. In other words, they were tailor-made to fit just right. Jesus's imagery shows us something really powerful about rest. First, that rest is not about laziness or indulgence. It's about learning what it looks like to walk in the purpose God has invited us into. Because when we are doing something we aren't designed to do, we will always end up tired and overwhelmed. This is why there's a yoke involved. Jesus says, learn from me. He is our creator in human flesh. He more than anyone else understands our purpose. So Jesus came to teach us, to show us what it looks like to dedicate our lives to the mission that we were created for. That's why he invites us to be yoked up with him. Because ultimately, there is no true rest for our souls in anyone or anything but Jesus. God bless, and I will see you in the next video.